Okay, great. I'm so glad that everybody's here tonight. Uh, thanks for joining us on a Sunday night. Thanks for joining us in the fourth of, uh, of four financial aid webinars that we're doing this summer. The first three have been really great and super useful and helpful and uh, educational. Um, the archived version of those webinars is available on our website. Tonight is our fourth and final webinar. Um, just a few housekeeping notes. First, uh, please put any questions you might have in the Q&A. And also, closed captioning is available. That's the button down at the bottom of your screen with the CC, so you can activate that if you like. Um, I'm excited today to have uh, Jane Callagher with us. She's going to, um, to really bring light to a lot of information about financial aid. She's going to offer some fast facts and also some tips and advice. Um, so let's get right to it without, without further delay. Jane, um, fast facts is the, is the title tonight, but I know this is much more than that. Um, let's talk about, Jane, can you just tell us a little bit about what we're going to talk about tonight? Sure. You know, I think just financial aid has a portion of being so scary, but it, it shouldn't be scary. This should be such an exciting time for your student and parents, the whole family to get involved, talk about affordability, visit schools, and just be really aware of the deadlines for full financial aid consideration. Because at the sticker price that colleges are right now, if you need financial aid, you want to put your best foot forward, uh, follow the deadlines, and get full financial aid consideration. So I was going to start with the facts and tips to keep in mind as you apply for financial aid. Number one is know your deadlines. I moved ahead, Drew. <laughs> um, you know, we're just going to talk in general. This is sort of the um, cumulative fourth financial aid session. If you have general questions, feel free to answer them in the chat, ask them in the chat or the Q&A. Um, and I'm gonna try to help you get organized and figure out how to um, per proceed with financial aid. So financial aid tips. I would say one of the most important things to know you know, your student may have an idea where he or she wants to go to school. Maybe you visited, but different schools have different deadlines. You need to meet the financial aid deadlines. They're critical for full consideration. At Holy Cross, they're published on the website, admissions and financial aid. Early decision has a certain deadline and you'll hear about a month later, fine, um, regular decision, your deadline is January 15th and you will hear mid-March. Um, and this, this I learned just from having my four sons go to school. Look at the school's websites. In the old days, you had a catalog. Now you look on the school's websites, they should be current. We're looking at 20, the year 22, 23. So look at all the schools, prioritize what the student, which ones the student wants to apply to. Keep a notebook or a list, write down the deadlines and just do the earliest one first and try to have them all done by that date. And then you're good to go. And that's true. Do not wait until you're admitted. You know, it, it, if you're applying early decision, your deadline for the FAFSA and profile and IDOC are, is um, November 15th, as well as the early decision application. You will hear your answer by December 15th. If you're admitted, you're gonna get your financial aid award either that day or very shortly thereafter. And then you're good to go for senior year. So um, that's really important. Regular decision, you have a little more time. Deadline is January 15th and you will get a full financial aid package in March as long as you've done what you've needed to do ahead of time. And again, apply for financial aid when you apply for admission. So, you know, we get phone calls all the time. Again, I really want to emphasize, don't stress about this. Let, let your student enjoy senior year, junior year, whatever he or she is in now. You should relax and enjoy it. The FAFSA is a, the federal um, uh, free application for federal student aid. It's free. So don't ever pay anyone to help you with the FAFSA. We do hear it can be complicated. You have to apply for an FSE. FSA ID number, the student needs a number and one of the parents needs a number. 
um, you need, you'll need your 2020 federal tax returns on hand to fill it out. And, you know, you can call us certainly if you have any questions, whatever. And then that determines your eligibility for federal financial aid. The CSS profile is you need to pay for that. I think it's $25 and 16 for every additional school. I could be wrong. That's going to determine the student's eligibility for federal, I mean, for institutional financial aid, a need-based grant that is critical as well for full consideration of financial aid. And a lot of people don't understand the difference. It's federal. All students are eligible for federal loans, maybe work study, a Pell Grant. Institutional is the Holy Cross Grant. And there is a merit from student admissions as well. Um, the other piece is just remember the three critical application materials are the FAFSA, the profile, and IDOC. And IDOC is how it's the portal on the College Board site where you'll upload your 2020 federal tax returns, W-2s, business taxes if ap applicable, and that is their secure portal where we can access the information to assess the student's eligibility. Jane, let me interrupt and ask a quick question. Um, this is something I get confused about sometimes, and I know families do as well. Mm -hmm. um, if a, if a student has not started their admissions application, mm -hmm. can the parents start and perhaps even complete the financial aid application? You can complete the FAFSA and profile, I believe, and the pro you're going to prioritize your schools for each document. If you're applying to one school, you just list that one school on the FAFSA or the profile. The problem is if you've done the FAFSA and or the profile, but you haven't yet applied to Holy Cross, we have no way to link you with the financial aid form. So it is not until you have a full application through admissions that we, you know, we connect you to your, you know, your Holy Cross account. But there's nothing blocking the parents from starting that financial aid application early. No, the forms, I think the, I think the profile opened a little early this year. Um, they're typically open October 1st which is soon. And what's great about it is you're using 2020 tax information. You've probably already done your 2020 taxes. So they should be fresh in your mind. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's not any real reason or advantage or need to wait on filling out the financial aid forms or at the very least getting a, getting a head start. Not at all. Start thinking about it. Start looking at the forms. There's an EFC calculator just to kind of get an idea of what you might be eligible for. There's one on our website, while the College Board has a great EFC calculator. You can plug in your you know, information, but it's only as good as the information you put in. And people misunderstand that EFC, your, what the family's expected to pay is, can be much different from the FAFSA to the profile. And you know, it's a, I, I think it's a great moment for those parents who are getting on their kids' cases about completing their common application and getting their essays and supplements read, um, well, well, parents have their own to-do list as well with the financial aid forms. And, and there's no reason to, or no need necessarily to wait on those. It's such an advantage. You know, I, I see it as it opens up October 1st, try to get the forms done, prioritize your applications where the student wants to apply, and then let the student sort of enjoy senior year. You know, there's so much going on. COVID, never mind the economy, senior year, just get this out of the way. And it's, it's you know, it, it can be a little bit of a challenge, but we're here to help you if you need help anytime. Again, I, I think we covered this in a prior webinar, but, you know, for a, a, a parent or a family to go in and, and start the financial aid documentation and application, um, they can revisit that. They can come back days later and continue working, you know, save their progress, continue working on these applications. Um, it doesn't have to all be done in one sitting, right? Exactly. But the profile, once you submit, submit, you know, you push that button on the profile, that's permanent. We can always make adjustments on our end, but you'll have to, you know, email us to make any, you know, if you make a mistake and a lot of people put their retirement amount in their investments or little things like that. We can adjust, but once you submit the profile, it is done. You can't change it. You can update okay. anytime. Let's talk about how college lasts for four years. 
It should be a four-year plan. Co private colleges are, you know, obviously very expensive now. But you know what? We found at Holy Cross lots of studies. The administration is committed. Once the student is admitted, Holy Cross meets full demonstrated institutional need. It does take into account home equity, how many are in the family, how many are in a private, you know, siblings in college, all kinds of things like that. So you have to plan for four years. And I think, you know, if you apply for financial aid on time, the student gets the financial aid. It's usually split half in the fall, half in the spring. You maybe you'll need a parent loan. It, it really can be very affordable. And a lot of times a private institution like Holy Cross can be cheaper than a state institution because there is a lot of funding available. Yeah, Jane, that's a good point. I think sometimes people are thrown off a bit by sticker price. Mm -hmm. And they think that um, they think that everyone pays the sticker price, and that schools that have a sticker price that's lower uh, will will of course obviously be cheaper. Mm -hmm. But such such a large percentage of college students are paying something different than the sticker price, uh, no matter the college they work for. And and while there can be some way to to anticipate that by using the calculator. Um, mm -hmm. Really, the best thing, right, is to just to submit your financial aid documentation and submit your admissions application and, and, and see what happens as far as the, the eventual final cost of attendance. In that case, if the FAFSA is done on time, the profile and um, you know, submitting your taxes, it's, it's we see so many tax returns. I couldn't tell you who makes this. You know, it's totally confidential, absolutely confidential. We have a small office. You know, we um, Holy Cross is more need aware now, so we read hundreds more applicants who may have not may not be admitted to Holy Cross. Um, but for the full consideration, do the forms do the forms on time. That's critical. And typically at Holy Cross, rising sophomores, juniors, and seniors must reapply every year. But typically, if your family's financial aids financial circumstances, number in the household stay about the same, the student's institutional grant should be stay about the same all four years. And, and Jane, just a question about um, the ability to anticipate costs in the, in the financial aid calculator. While, while families would, if they're using the calculator, they're putting in personal financial information, are they actually putting in any, any personal information, names, addresses, social security numbers, anything like that? No, no, it's actually, it's, it's just between, you, typically the parent does the calculator. It's kind of in cyberspace. It's nobody's housing that information. You can just plug it in. It's just, it's just a, it's, it's just a tool to help you kind of estimate what the student might be eligible for. It's not housed anywhere. So it's, a, it's anonymous, essentially. It's anonymous. Okay, great. Yep. But it's only as good as the information that's submitted. <laughs> right which is critical. Okay, um, how about um, college can be less expensive than you think? I can't wait to hear you make this point. Definitely, I, it really, some, again, I'm, I'll read this. Some private colleges offer enough aid that you end up paying less than you would if you went to a less expensive school or a state school. We have students who, this year, you know, with the cost of attendance, we have some students, you know, high need students, for whatever reason, some of them got a, a Holy Cross grant to the, of, um, seven, they're getting like $72,000 with no loans. And that, that's possible. It sounds unbelievable. And very often when I meet an especially high need student, I always say, why did you, why did you come to Holy Cross? What, what appeal, you know, what's the appeal for Holy Cross? And so many, whether they're in California, Texas, Nevada, New York, it's often a guidance counselor at school or someone, some peer or some mentor for them either went to Holy Cross, knows someone who went to Holy Cross. And when I say, what made you come to Holy Cross? 99% of the time they say the financial aid. It was the best financial aid award I got out of it. One girl from recently applied to 16 schools. And aside from the two military academies, Holy Cross offered her the greatest amount, which it can be surprising. Don't let the sticker price Deter you from applying. I'll say it's you know it's so counterintuitive in our in our society because you know, if you see the sticker price on a house or a car, 
you know, you may, may not be paying exactly that, but within a very small margin of error, you're going to be paying that. Mm -hmm. um, and college is so different. Uh, and mm -hmm. it were not, not for everybody, but it can be so different for such a per high percentage of families where they don't pay the sticker price that is listed. And so it's certainly understandable how families can be confused by this um, and turned off by high sticker price schools, just like you'd be turned off by a high sticker price on a house you can't afford or a car you can't afford. But college is, a, the financing of college is very, very different and aid available is so different. So while it's understandable that people would be turned off by that sticker price, I hope that you'll listen to Jane's words tonight and be open to considering schools um, of varying price levels, knowing that between aid and merit scholarships, um, the, the eventual price might be very different than what you see on the sticker price. And loans, loans can be a little bit scary. You know, we're, uh, we've become very good at counseling students and parents. You know, it's pretty impossible to go to a school right now, a private ed, you know, institution without a loan or two. And if you break it down, your cost of attendance minus financial aid, maybe a little parent loan here and there, break it up in between two semesters, sometimes with a payment plan, it's very affordable for many. It's surprisingly affordable. And you know what? When I see the students come on campus in the fall, it's just like a breath of fresh air. They've gone, they've done the FAFSA, done the profile, been admitted, moved in, and it's, it's awesome. From there, it's just awesome. All right, so let's think about next steps. Next steps, what are the next steps? <laughs> uh, well, number one, you know, being prepared, talk to your student. Talk, it, this college, private or even public right now, it's expensive. Talk to your student about what you're willing to pay, you know, what are you willing to consider? Does, this, does the student work in the summer? Do you have savings? Do you have 529 savings? Check your credit. If a parent is going to take out a Parent PLUS loan, which is a federal loan, um, I'm told if you don't have negative credit, you'll most likely be approved. We have parents who borrow $1,000 for a PLUS loan every year. We have parents who borrow $60,000, which is amazing. But, you know, check your credit. Make sure you are, you know, set up to apply if you need to. And make a plan. Just have a plan. Again, look at all the schools the student's considering applying to and know the financial aid deadlines. And if the financial aid deadline for one school is October 15th, try to get everything for every school ready by then. The other thing, outside scholarships um, can definitely help, you know, alleviate some of the expense. And Holy Cross is very generous in that if you receive an outside scholarship, we have to fit it within your federal need. You know, that's the estimated family contribution minus your federal estimated family, yeah, estimated family contribution, right, is your need. So we have to fit it in, but we're very generous and we can just add the outside scholarship to your award, we will. We rarely take away scholarship to fit in an outside scholarship. And again, I, talk to your student, talk to your student about what what is the family willing to pay? And, and going to college right now is a huge family decision and a sacrifice. You gotta make sacrifices. And that's such a good point. And you know, this brings us to the sort of the end. And um, this is a great point because I wanna I wanna follow up on, on that that particular point because I know my parents didn't talk to me about how much money they made annually. They didn't no. talk to me about, um, geez, they didn't talk to me about like what we could afford for college. And it was, when I grew up, it was sort of taboo to talk about matters like that. But mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like what you're suggesting is that families should have a conversation, maybe not the nitty gritty details of the family finances, but about what the family's ability to afford is going to be for college, and at the same time, maybe about the willingness to afford. Do you have any advice about how to like start that conversation, have that conversation, particularly for parents who may have, uh, you know, may have grown up at the same time I did, where that those conversations about family finances just didn't happen. For me, if I had ever said to my father, "Let me see your W two, or there's, <laughs> there's no way, and I, I actually, 
I had a sister who was 11 months younger than I was. We were very competitive our whole lives. And she wanted all her life, she wanted to go to UVM. I thought, I'm going to apply to UVM and get in there first. And I did. And she ended up going to BC. And we probably should have switched it around. It's just funny. You know, our parents made the commitment they would make it happen. I, and I worked in the summer. I, you know, I, and I, in the college board, it builds in a contribution from every student, whether the student works in the summer or not. There's a built in contribution of $2,400 for every student. Your, um, your student doesn't need to see your private finances, but I would have the, have the conversation. And I think one of the most helpful things I would say as a parent, go visit some schools, just go on a tour, collect their catalogs or collect their information online, compare the prices, compare the amenities, you know, consider, I had a, I had a son who went to Chicago we dropped him off. We never went back for four years. We had four kids. We could just fly to Chicago for parents weekend. It was fine. It was fine. It's okay. So kind of just have a, I think visiting schools is hugely helpful. That's a good point, Jane. Um, and, and I think also remember keeping in mind, as you said earlier, that um, this isn't a one-year plan. You need a four-year plan to afford right. college. Um, right. That's for one child and certainly more than four years if you have more than one. Um, you know, I, we get lots of calls in the admission office. Sorry, I, I want to mention just like you saw there in the chat um, that you can please put any questions in the Q&A. We also know that you voted on some questions and we're going to ask, I'm going to ask those of Jane in the order that you voted in just a minute. Um, but I do want to just ask one other quick thing. And Jane, that's, we get a lot of questions, uh, phone calls and emails in the admission office. Um, from prospective applicants all the time, I think sometimes families feel hesitant to reaching out to financial aid offices to ask questions. Are, is your office and, and financial aid offices in general like receptive of questions, not from current students, but from prospective applicants and applicants? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're happy to talk to anyone who calls. You can send us an email. We're happy to help you. It, it can, especially if it's your first son or daughter entering college, it can be a little bit scary. I'll tell you one thing, Drew, with the four-year plan, I want to emphasize. So this year, your son or daughter is applying to Holy Cross. Do the form, spouse of profile, IDOC on time. Get the financial aid package when the student's admitted. Next year, so every year you have to reapply. Same forms every year. In limited cases, we might waive a couple. And that's how you can plan for four years. If your circumstances are about the same, you're going to plan on the same board for four years. All Just right, so let's get to the lottery or you inherit a $5 million house on Nantucket, we're going to adjust it. I, I saw those Powerball numbers coming up for uh, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I will be more than happy to pay the full cost of <laughs> important tuition should I, should I hit that number. Um, all right, so I'm going to ask the questions in the order here that the votes received. So the most popular question um, revealed um, voted on by our attendees tonight was, what can I expect to find in my financial aid package? So can you just like give a, a, a brief detail of like what information is in a financial aid award? Sure. It's literally attached to your admissions um, application. We do send a paper booklet and it's available online too. It's going to list your Holy Cross need-based grant. Whether it's, you may have merit. There, there are limited merit scholarships given out through admissions or a need-based institutional grant, then we will list any, there's a Holy Cross loan um, and federal loans, to, you know, the subsidized loan, unsubsidized loan, depending on eligibility, a Pell Grant, if you're eligible, you'll get a Pell Grant. We might include a state grant. There are a few state grants left, Massachusetts, Vermont, Pennsylvania, and whether or not you received work study. And I'll tell you to be to get full consideration for state grants, the state deadlines for the FAFSA are listed on the FAFSA. So for example, Massachusetts is May 1st. So that's pretty late. Our deadline is November 15th or January 15th. So you should make May 1st. And then we'll there's a booklet. We don't build in parent loans, some schools do, but it will explain it, ex, it explains first the grant amounts then the loan amounts, should you choose to take the loans, and then what is your um, final bottom line that you're going to be expected to pay? Okay, the second most, that was all great information there. The second most popular question was, 
Is there anything else I need to submit in addition to the FAFSA and the CSS profile? Yes, your 2020 federal tax returns need to be uploaded to IDOC. It's a secure portal on the college. So once you submit a CSS profile for a student, you can go in and play around with it now. Set up an account, but just go to collegeboard.org, I guess, and set up an account, secure portal, 2020 federal tax returns get uploaded there. And that helps us determine eligibility. Great. Um, third most popular question tonight was, will it be penalized for submitting an incomplete inf application due to missing information? Five years ago, you would have probably. Honestly, it's changed a lot. There's a certain budget for every incoming class. So, you know, the deadline is November 15th or January or January 15th for ED regular and then ED2 is in there. So we have a certain budget for every class. Once the decisions go out on or about March 15th for regular decision, we have overspent that budget, as you know, Drew. You know, you accept way more students who are than are going to come. So if you haven't done a FAFSA profile till the following June or July, there may not be, there probably won't be funds available. Okay, fourth most popular question was, what should I know about the Massachusetts state aid process? Uh, well, Massachusetts in particular, the deadline for the FAFSA, as I said, is May 1st. Um, you both, one parent and the, the custodial parent and the student must be residents of Massachusetts no, for five years or two years. Mass so the state scholarships get swapped out dollar for dollar with Holy Cross. And actually I'm in the process, one of my jobs in the office is dealing with state scholarships. Massachusetts for the first time in three or four years just increased their grant amounts. So I am reducing each student's Holy Cross grant by that amount to award the mass grant. So it's and, not and our last most popular question, but I think it's probably uh, one of the frequently asked questions that your office gets, do I need to reapply for financial aid every year? I can't emphasize that enough, yes. And the priority deadline is November 1st. So early because the, we can't release upper class renewals until after graduation. The reason for that is we have to make sure every student is making satisfactory academic progress. But if we get your application in November, we can work on your upper class before we start ED, ED2 regular decision. So, yeah. Great, we have uh, a couple more uh, questions here in the q and I just wanna uh, say to folks, we have just a few minutes left. So if you have any last questions, uh, please put them in the Q&A. Um, a, a, a loyal viewer from the state of Texas would like to know, is it possible to receive grant and merit scholarship? Hmm, yes, I think so, Drew, right? Um, yes, yes. And you know, I wanna bring up one thing. We have what's called the more than one grant. In the old days, if you had two or more students in college, you just got more, the student just got more Holy Cross grant. And then when the sibling graduated, we kind of took it away and we'd get, we always got called, you took it away. We'd say, you have one less in college. If you had one more in college and we increased it, nobody ever called us then. So we named it the more than one grant, but it's need based. So just read the fine print of the booklet call us or read on our website. We, we try to be as transparent as we can. Um, and any um, last words of advice? I mean, this is the fourth in a series of, of financial aid webinars. Uh, we've covered a lot of information. We've covered the FAFSA, we've covered the CSS profile. We've talked a lot about a lot of um, pitfalls that, um, that families fall into. But Jane, let's say you and I bump into each other at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And I'm just an old neighbor, and I say, oh, my son's applying this year. Any advice, Jane, um, in, with your expertise in financial aid, as I'm pushing my, um, my carriage down the freezer aisle, what, what would be your quick words of advice to me um, running into each other at the grocery store about my children applying for financial aid this year? I think having seen last year that so many schools shut down and were remote. We, we have freshmen this year who moved in who never saw Holy Cross. Never, never saw it until they moved in at the end of August. My, I, I, want, I want you to enjoy this process. It's so exciting to have a child go to college. It enriches the whole family. It's amazing, it's great. 
go visit whatever schools you can. Prioritize where the, stu you know, the student's interests, what school appeals to him or her, go visit schools, be aware of the deadlines, collect catalogs, read the website, start a notebook, just start a notebook. And for, for my end, financial aid is my expertise, apply for financial aid on time for full consideration. And then it's fun, it's great. It's, it's an amazing experience, it's awesome. I, I could only dream of running into you in the in the, in the grocery <laughs> store aisle with such with such sage advice. Well, with um, COVID, Drew, so many so many students couldn't visit anywhere, and you right. can now most schools, which is that's right. Great fall is a great time to just go take a walk. And go and in, you know, yeah, whatever. I mean, so many schools are open to visits now, whether they're official or unofficial. Mm -hmm. I also say the the resources that colleges and universities have mobilized to virtual programming is astounding. Yep. If you yeah. think you know what's on a school's website, but you haven't visited it in the last month or two, you need to revisit it again because yeah. schools have done an incredible job, not just Holy Cross. So many schools have done a great job. Yeah. Um, thank you, Jane. Thank you to all of our attendees tonight. Please check out the archived version um, of, our of our three prior financial aid webinars and know that we have a whole series planned for this fall um, about Holy Cross, about um, high school seniors getting prepared to apply to college we have a six-part series coming up this fall that we were very excited about. Look for your inboxes and look on our website for more information about that. Should be coming soon. Um, thanks again for all of our attendees. Um, stay safe, stay sane, and stay in touch. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.